we're delighted you're here. Uh, Happy to be here. And uh, so far, <laughs> so far. <laughs> this too will change. Yeah. <laughs> so you're you're uh, have a terrific story. You're, you know, some people are born with a silver spoon in their in their mouth, and uh, their job is to maximize an amazing head start in life. In many ways, that, that's not your story, is it? You have some very humble uh, roots growing up in Flint, Michigan. Tell us a bit about that and your, your family growing up, just so people get a little glimpse of where you are. You know, the first of all, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for doing this. Um, I, you know, I don't want to, uh, people are given a narrative and you can embellish it some, so I don't want to build this into some huge Horatio Alger story. It's <laughs> not true, but, but I, I was. Horatio for sure. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was born in Flint, Michigan. Um, my father was a tool and die man. I don't know if you'll know what a tool and die man is. He's still tradesman at the AC Spark Club, which no longer exists. Mm. Got full of the Delco, and the Delco went bankrupt, as I recall. But anyway, so I come from sort of an automotive background. My grandfather on the mother's side immigrated from Cornwall after World War I and uh, spent his entire life, this is, this is not an exaggeration, entire life at the same place on the same assembly line for Buick Motor, making engines. Uh, he was there for the riots, remember the labor riots, you know, and the, mm -hmm. and the formation of the UAW things, and he, and he literally wore a blue, <coughs> kind of blue shirt and carried a lunch pail every day for 43 years mm -hmm. to, to do it. Uh, and my father was on the second or third shift. Again, I don't know if people understand this, but that means you either go to work at like two or three in the afternoon from midnight or you go at midnight to go to the morning. So he could, during the day, go to University of Michigan Flint campus uh, and it took him about 10 years, he got a bachelor's degree in engineering, and then he moved up into sort of lower and middle management. Uh, and then in, uh, uh, when I went in the ninth grade, we moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan, because uh, there was a new Ford Saline plant, which was a plastics injection molding plant that he went to be a general foreman at. And I actually worked at that plant one summer, which was a great experience, it was a real education. And, uh, and I was fortunate because we lived in Ann Arbor, I, I could afford to go to college. I almost, did, I almost went back. Oh. They offered me a training position to be a foreman wow. uh, in 1970. Uh, and uh, it, would, it would pay $20,000, which in 1970 we sounded like an enormous amount of money. And I said to my mother, I'm not going to go to college because we really don't have money to go to college. And, and uh, they'll offer me this great job. And my mother, too, her great. I'll always be hugely in her debt for this, among other things. Said that's ridiculous. Uh, if you live at home and help pay some of the bills, then then you can go to college at U of M. And so if I hadn't lived in Arbor, I literally would not have gone to college. And and I remember my first my first semester this day. I remember my my bill it was one hundred and eighty four dollars was my tuition. <laughs> <laughs> so all of you have kids in college. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I went to seven years of Michigan, including law school. And the, the, the tuition for my last Michigan Law School was like $1,500. So I came out with a Michigan uh, law degree with no debt. Never occurred to me to borrow money. It just seemed crazy. So I, I was very fortunate. And then I, 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 I was in philosophy and I reluctantly went to law school. Um, it was not my first choice. I'd never met a lawyer when I went to law school. And, and, uh, <laughs> but you had done it differently. And uh, yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, I did uh, surprisingly well in law school, and then I was off. <laughs> well, and, and, and briefly, for those of you who don't know David's background, we'll move it in and out of talking different right. parts uh, right. after law school. I clerked for uh, Justice Powell in the Supreme right. Court. Uh, as anyone knows in the legal field, one of the greatest honors you can have as a young law school grad is to clerk for a Supreme Court Justice. Uh, so an amazing experience there. Worked for uh, one of the fine uh, elite uh, Washington law firms. A brief uh, stint for 82, 83. You're in right. London for a short window. Uh, we would have just missed each other, by the way. I was uh, 87 and 95, so uh, I didn't see you got in any trouble there. You, you came out all right. <laughs> uh, I spent two years just watching the celebrations about the Falklands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, moved, I moved to London while the, 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 the invasion force was on its way down, and all the American generals were saying, "There's no way they can." It can't be done anymore. Right. And they marched right in and took the thing. And then for two years, they just had celebration. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a whole lot of things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. and then uh, legal career, then you became a general counsel. You were at the Cap Cities. Right. Uh, and, and really catapulted uh, quickly into life in the fast lane. That's where the elite legal spheres, general counsel. Became good friends with Bob Iger. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
uh, and got involved in the whole Disney organization at ABC, and ultimately uh, the president of ABC News for uh, some 13 years or so. 13, 13 years, 10 months, but who's going to But you just stepped down. Got involved is a nice way of saying it. Disney bought us. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't feel like we were getting involved. <laughs> on the news, but actually sometimes you become such a figure that you are the news. I mean, there was a New Yorker, a featured New Yorker story about you, which I'm sure found is, it, Yeah, you? oh yeah. <laughs> which I'm sure is not what you're saying. I was savage. There was a full profile in New Yorker. It was so uh, back in 2000. And, and, uh, yeah, that's tough, though, when you're the news. And even now, having just uh, re retired and moved on to something new, uh,